G'day traders. Today we're answering another question from a student in the mastery course. And this student wants to sort an array of EMA values, but also keep the corresponding ticker ID associated with that value while being able to interact with the array. So for example, in this case, we're sorting the array in ascending order. So the lowest EMA value is first, the highest is last, but we're also keeping track of which ticker each value corresponds to. Now the methods I'm using to achieve this are quite interesting. And the script actually makes use of a brand new PineScript feature that was released a couple of days ago called custom methods. So in this video, we're going to be covering how to create custom types, data types, and we're going to be covering how to create a custom method. And this is the new feature I'm speaking of. Method syntax comes to PineScript. So if I scroll down here, the blog post here says the dot notation used for extension methods in other languages is now available in PineScript. So I love the guys that write these blog posts. They're clearly programmers. They're not speaking to traders. They're speaking to programmers with all this jargon. Basically what this means is if we're using something like a box, for example, excuse my childish writing with a mouse, uh, the dot notation is this. So dot new and then we can use a function uh, or it's actually a, a method, uh, but a function and a method are pretty similar. You don't really need to know the difference in PineScript to be able to use them properly. If I scroll down here, see this line here, source array dot push value. In the past, you would have to do something like this, array dot push and then pass in the array ID and then the value. But now with this new method feature added to Pine, we can do exactly the same thing by just saying array ID dot push value. Now, in this particular example, it doesn't make our code that much more efficient, but in a complex script, you can see how this can really help tidy up our scripts and make the code a bit more intuitive to read, especially. So without further ado, let's jump into the Pine editor and start writing out this script. All right, so here's our starting template. All I'm doing here is creating a regular indicator script with overlay to true. So we're drawing over price action and we're getting five ticker inputs or symbol inputs. Doesn't really matter what these are. They could be anything, but for today we're sticking with Forex. So we're just working with Oanda. We got Euro dollar, dollar yen, New Zealand dollar, pound dollar, and gold. And what we want to do is get the EMA value for each of these, the 50 EMA on the daily chart, daily time frame. So we're going to be using the security function here. Then we're going to insert all of those EMA values into an array. So we're going to be creating an array based on a custom type. So before we do that, we need to define our custom type that stores both the EMA value and the ticker ID. So to do that, we use the type keyword. It doesn't matter what you call this. I'm going to call it EMA underscore sorted. Wow, if I can spell EMA underscore sorted, and now we need to define the data types that are stored within this overall class type. So I said we need to store the EMA value and the ticker value. So that's a float value and a string value. So we can just declare these values in here. So float EMA value and string ticker. That's it. We have defined our custom type. Now we can create a type based on this by simply saying EMA sorted my custom type equals EMA sorted dot new and then it takes a float value and a ticker string and so now what we need to do is create five of these for each ticker id and get the ema value using the security function for each but before we do that let's declare our custom array so for this array i'm going to make it persistent so it doesn't reset on every new bar on our chart that's because on each bar we're going to be setting each of these five values in the array so we don't really need to recreate the array on each new bar this will just make our script compile and run a bit faster so to define any array the syntax is usually like this array and then open um, arrows and then the data type of the array needs to go in between these arrows so if we're going to create a array based on a custom data type, we need to paste our data type name into this array syntax. And then I need to give it a name. So I'll just give this a name of just EMA array. And then we need to set it to array.new, open left arrow. And then we need to put the data type in again and also specify the size of the array. Now this is optional, but for today, we're going to set it to five. So we have an array based on a custom data type with a total of five elements. And that's going to be these five custom data types. So now we have our array declared. Let's get our EMA values. So since today's lesson is not about the security function, I'm just going to copy this code over to save time. Uh, it's not that complex anyway. All we're doing is requesting data from a security that is not this symbol. We pass in our symbol IDs, our ticker IDs, the time frame we want to get this data from, and then the expression, the data that we want to request 
from the security. In this case, that's the 50 EMA based on closing price from the daily chart for each ticker or symbol. Now we have these five EMA values. The next thing to do is completely optional, but because it makes it easier to understand what's happening, we're gonna draw all five of these onto the chart. This is obviously optional. We can't really do much with this information since this is all EMA values for markets completely unrelated to this one. But at least we can see our values up here now. And what we wanna do now is add all of these to an array and sort them in ascending order. So lowest number to the highest number. In order to do that, we need to insert all of these values into our array. So that's going to look like this. Now notice that for the first time, as of a couple of days ago, we can now use dot notation with arrays to interact with those arrays. So as I mentioned earlier in the past, in order to do this sort of thing, in order to set the first element of this array to any value, we would have to write array.set and then pass in our array ID, then pass in the index, then pass in the value. But now we can skip this part and just simply put dot and then the method that an array typically has access to. And here we go. Now it's not, not that amazing, but for any of you experienced programmers out there, you know that this is a pretty cool feature and I'm surprised it took this long for the TradingView developers to add it to Pine. Um, it's much more intuitive. This is much more similar to traditional programming languages now. The syntax we can use here is much more intuitive for most programmers out there who work with the more popular languages like Python, Java, JavaScript, C, and all of those sorts of languages. So anyway, we need to set all five values here. So I can copy and paste this line a few times. Remember array values uh, elements start from zero. The first index is zero. So zero, one, two, three, four gives us five elements. We need to pass in the value of each EMA and each ticker string. So we're setting each array element in our custom data type array to all of these values and we're creating a new EMA sorted type, passing in the EMA value in the ticker for each. And now we have everything we need in order to manipulate this data. Uh, in this case, we're going to sort the data in ascending order. And to do that, we're going to use the new method feature. Now methods work pretty much identically to custom functions. So a custom function would look like this. Let's say you have value one, value two, and you want to return whatever value one multiplied by value two is. This is how you would define a custom function that multiplies these two values and outputs them. And then we could plot this by saying, what's uh, one times two? Save my code. And we're getting two plotted up here uh, using this custom function. Now to do a method, a custom method, it's pretty much the same syntax, except we need to use the method keyword in front of this. And so our custom method is going to be called sort custom array. And now this is where things get pretty complicated, particularly for this lesson. If we make the very first parameter of this method an array, um, then we can call this method by using the dot notation I showed you just before. So we can use this syntax to sort our EMA array. If we make the first parameter in this method's parentheses a custom array like this, and now we need to use the same custom function syntax equals sign followed by a right arrow, enter, tab, and then anything within this scope is executed by this method when we call it. Now, normally if you're just working with a standard float array um, like this, let me comment this out so this compiles properly. If we had an array like this, um, test array equals array float, array.new float, five values. Um, if we had a normal float array like this, we could simply just use the test array dot sort function. And this would sort the values in ascending order. However, with our custom data type, this function won't work. So if I paste EMA array in here, our script is now broken because PyScript doesn't know how to sort an array filled with data types of this nature. It doesn't know that we want to sort the array by EMA value. So what that means is we need to write our own code for sorting the array elements. And that's a little bit tricky. It's not too crazy, but it does require some pretty scary looking code if you're new to Pine Scripts. For those of you who are experienced, this won't be that bad, but we just need to nest two for loops within each other. And then these two for loops will, will cycle through the array 
and compare all the elements to each other and then set the array elements in order of their values. In this case, ascending order. So to do this, we need to create our first, which is gonna be for i equals zero to source array dot size minus two. I'll explain why it's minus two in a moment. But now we need to nest a second for loop here. And so the second for loop is going to loop within this for loop. It needs to have a different index value. Obviously we can't call this I. So we have two for loops here. The second for loop is going to be set to the first for loops index plus one. And we're looping to our source array dot size minus one. And so now what we can do is we can check if source array dot get I. So that's this first for loop value or index array index. So we get that value. Now remember when we get this value, it's going to be this data type, our custom data type. So what we can do here is say EMA value. If the first loops EMA value is greater than the second loops EMA value, then we need to swap their positions in the array. So to do that, we need to create a temporary data type here called temp equals source array dot get i and then we need to set source array dot set i to this for loops element so i can copy this here and change this to j and then we need to set the uh, second for loops array element to our temp data type so we're essentially swapping these two elements position within the array because they are not in the correct order so now if I save my code, let's just make sure this compiles okay. There we go, no problems. Now what we can do is call this custom method on our custom data type array. So we can sort EMA array. We could also call this function like this, uh, EMA array. That would do the same thing. So now you can understand why methods are very similar to functions. In fact, if we got rid of this and at the end of our for loop, we just return the source array, we could do something like this. So this is how it would work in the past. You'd have to use a custom function and you'd have to call it like this. Uh, but now that we have the new method functionality, uh, we can simply do that. And that makes coding a lot more efficient when working with co uh, complex scripts like this. So uh, here we are defining our custom array sorting method. We're calling it here. The final thing to do is draw this data to the chart. So I'll just copy this code over to save time. Uh, here we're just checking if the script is running on the final bar on our chart. Uh, we're creating a array text. It's blank to begin with. And then we loop through all of our array elements and we append or add the array elements text to this value. And then finally we create a label with the text so that we can see what the heck's going on with our custom function. So now if I save my code, we should be getting the script that we saw at the beginning of the video. There we go. Sorting everything in ascending order using a custom method, a custom data type, and a array based on that custom data type. So we covered quite a few advanced PineScript concepts in today's lesson. Uh, I hope you guys found this interesting. Uh, just to wrap up the lesson, I want to cover a couple things. First of all, um, this probably looks a bit complicated. We can get rid of this line of code here and just add on a new line at the end of this. So now if I save my code, the label will still be drawing, but we have a blank string at the bottom of the label. That's why I added this uh, extra line here. This just checks if this for loop index is equal to the final loop. If it's on the final loop, then we don't add a new line character to the label text. And that's obviously purely optional. Just makes the label look a little more symmetrical for all of you OCD traders out there. Uh, what else is there to cover? Uh, with the for loop here, the reason why we have to subtract two from this original for loop is because if we don't do this, we get an array index out of bounds error on the final loop. If I change this to minus one and save my code, the script will no longer compile because in array.get function index five is out of bounds. Uh, so that's why we need to subtract two from our original loop, but we don't need to do that for the second loop because the second loop loops up to the final element where this loops up to the second final or second last element. And then this for loop runs on that second last element and we're adding one to the original array index. And so this for loop runs on the final array element, even though this loop doesn't loop up to the final element. 
Hopefully that makes sense. It's really hard to explain this sort of stuff. Um, but if you play around with this code and try sorting your own custom data types, I'm sure you'll figure out what I mean with practice. The final thing I want to do before we end this video is I want to show you guys how we could add a optional Boolean value to this method called ascending. And ascending is always going to be set to true by default. So this is how you declare a default parameter. Now, if I save my code, everything will compile without any problems. If I get rid of this equals true, however, now we have a problem because this is no longer an optional parameter and our function call, our method call here requires us to specify whether ascending is true or false, like so. Um, but for this example that I'm about to show you, we're going to leave this as true by default. And then what we're going to do is check in this if statement, this value, and if this value is false, we're going to sort the array by the opposite um, direction, descending order. So what we're going to say here is we're going to say if ascending and this condition is met, the element of I is greater than the element of J. If that's true, we swap the elements or, and then I'm going to put this on a new line just because it's easy to read. Otherwise it's going to be off my chart here to split a if statement across multiple lines. You need to press space after you hit enter. Otherwise you get a syntax error. And for the second check, the second condition we're gonna check is ascending not true and are our array elements in the opposite direction. So is element I less than element J? If so, then this for loop will sort the array in descending order. So now if I put false within this parameter, within this methods parentheses and hit save, this list will now be sorted in the opposite direction. So now we have the highest number at the top or the first element in our array is the highest number all the way down to the lowest number. You could also achieve this by just calling EMA array dot reverse because we're sorting in ascending order. So we could just reverse the order of our array if we want to, but I thought it was cool to show you guys how we can add this optional parameter into our method. So remember, if we don't specify a Boolean value here, then it's going to use this default value, which is true. And we're going to sort the array in ascending order. Anyway, my brain is fried after this video. I hope yours isn't, <laughs> uh, but it did take me a while this morning to figure this out. So I've been coding for a couple hours. I'm gonna go take a break now. As always, the source code will be below if you wanna play around with this. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, all that YouTube stuff. Uh, if you wanna learn more about PineScript, check out my website, pinescriptmastery.com. There's a free course there for all of you beginners. If this went way over your head, then you might wanna start there. It's completely free and has several hours of content covering the basics of Pine. And finally, if you're not aware, I do a weekly newsletter email that's also free where I share uh, book, podcasts, websites, blogs, animal sacrifice techniques, anything that <laughs> helped make me a better trader. Uh, I'm kidding about the animal sacrifice, I'm, I don't do that. But there is plenty of free, awesome content on my website, theartoftrading.com. Go and check that out if you want to learn more about PineScript or just my trading style and knowledge in general. As always, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Best of luck with your trading. I love you guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for supporting the channel. And I'll speak with you in the next video. Take care.